Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Author Camilo Romeo Zuniga turned his tragedy into art. Feelings on paper is a collection of raw feelings and bottled up emotions written down onto paper, turning into a first time author's book of delicate, meaningful poetry and short stories. Inspired by the same person who caused the heartache, words taken straight from the heart. Camilla was born on December 4th, 1993 in 21 Palms, California, moved to San Diego, California when he was three, served six years in the United States Air Force as a military police officer stationed in South Korea and Germany, traveled all over the world, a veteran and now a full-time student hoping to open his own business. Feelings on Paper is Romeo's first published book, Feelings on Paper, by the way, winner of the Plume Award for Literary Excellence by Camilo Romeo Zuniga, is our guest on This Week in America. Camilo, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. It's great to be here. Try to give a little background on there without giving away too much so you can talk about this and how meaningful this is to you. And readers can share so many of the emotions that you go through and bring out so well in your book, Feelings on Paper. What was the inspiration? When did you decide to take these feelings that you had and actually turn them into poetry? So the inspiration, it, it was a girl um, that I had a deep feelings for where things just didn't work out. The timing just wasn't there. And she, she's actually, she's the one that introduced me to poetry. I was never a fan of poetry. It's not that I disliked that. It, it, it wasn't something that I, I would read, but she, what, she introduced it to me. And whenever things didn't work out, I, everything that was bottled, bottled up, all the emotions, it, I just let it fly on a paper and, and it turned into this, this amazing book that I wrote. Well, it really is an amazing book and hard to believe this is the first book it's re- that you've written. You've done it so well and receiving such excellent reviews, an award-winning book, Feelings on Paper. Talk about, because uh, you, you say that the poetry is not something you really ever thought about. When you go through a difficult situation like that and, and you're trying to find the words, it's difficult for most of us just to find the words. You did them in such a beautiful, poetic way, expressing your feelings. It sounds like this is just natural for you. Once you, once you started, the, the words just sort of flowed to you. It, it, it's ridiculous because I, I've never been a, a much of a writer, but I wrote half the book in one night, literally 15 minutes right after she uh, she told me those words that she doesn't think she could be in a relationship. Uh, the, the words just came right out. Uh, the emotions were so strong that it I was able to, to express it with, with deep meaning, and, and that's how that came about. And beautifully expressed. That's why this book, I think, is resonating so well. The book is Feelings on Paper, Camilo Romeo Zuniga. And I'll spell all of that, give you a couple of websites to, to get information. Book available at uh, Amazon, writersrepublic.com, and the bookshop. I'll give you that as, as we go through the, the program. Have you spoken to the young lady since you broke it off with her, and then she inspired this this excellent book? Have you talked with her? I, I have not. Um, it, after... After she broke it off, maybe three weeks later, she just she contacted me to to tell me how she's doing, and that was a short conversation. I wish it was a lot longer, but it was just a short conversation. But aside from that, we haven't spoke. It's been it's been a little bit over a year now, and I we haven't spoken a, a word since. Did she have any idea that you were going to take? that relationship you had and turned it into this award-winning book of poetry feelings on paper. Any idea that you were, did she know that you were doing this? No, I, I honestly don't think that she knew that I had this in me because whenever we would be sitting there hanging out, reading poetry, she, she would always bring this new poetry book and we would just read to each other. Um, but to be honest, I don't think she, she knew I wasn't a reader much. Uh, so I don't think she would have known or saw this this book coming, to be honest. You know, it's interesting. Are you tempted to not only, I mean, you, you took sort of that interest in poetry that she had. You you took that and, uh, and made it yours. And this beautiful book of poetry that you've written, are you tempted to, like, maybe autograph a book for her and slip it in the mail and say, see, th- this is what came out of our relationship? Yeah. Um... <laughs> It, it's crossed my mind multiple times <laughs> because she does live down the street from me, and um, it, it just—I didn't want it to to 
be something where I, because there's a reason why she doesn't know about it. But um, I didn't want it to be like me trying to reach out, trying to make things work, because the way things were left off, it, it was better for the both of us to to not pursue it any any longer because she was in hardships and I was in hardships. Um, but she, I thought about it a couple of times. I just I I never I never slipped the book under her doormat. You know, I'm thinking that uh, everybody that goes through romantic encounters and, and, and not ending up the way you want them to, you sort of, be, you're hurt, you, t- you take the scars and you go on with your life. And you, you've you rebounded so nicely with this by by taking those feelings and, and writing them and sharing them with others. The book, by the way, is Feelings on Paper. Camillo Romeo Zuniga III is our guest on the program. The book available at uh, his website, I'll give you that here in a second, writersrepublic.com, the bookshop at Amazon. His website is author Camillo, C-I-C-A-M-I-L-O, Zuniga, Z-U-N-I-G-A.com. And we'll have all that on, on our website. You, you hit a home run with the first book. Some people maybe run out of a, a single on the first book and then they go from there. You hit a home run with this. What are you doing now? Are you working on another book of poetry? I have some stuff written down um, that I would like to to put together for may, maybe not make it a series, but I would like to put out another book. Like I said, I have I have a few things written down that it, it's also very meaningful words to me, and I would love to to publish a second book if possible. I just have to write a little bit more. You know, it's interesting because so many people think I geez I would I would like to do that. I don't even know how to get started. I think what you're talking about is emotionally you were ready to do that. Is it something that you could force when, as you're writing a new poem or is it something that you really have to feel before the words start coming to you? For me personally, I have to feel it because when I'm sitting there on, on a day where I'm, I'm just sitting on the couch and not doing much, I, it, it's hard for me to, to get my, or gather my thoughts and, and write words down without actually having a feeling or wanting to actually express something. So for me personally, it was experience and those actual feelings that allowed me to, to put some words together to, to create these sentences that created the poetry. Um, so, so like I said, personally, it, it, I, you had to feel the emotion in order to, to write the words. Have you always been a writer, you know, interested in, in maybe writing, or did this just happen because of the circumstances? It, it, the circumstances were, were definitely there. I wasn't much of a writer, especially not in high school, um, but the inspiration, the, the heartache, the, just everything put together. It, it, it was just so inspirational and her introducing me to poetry played a huge part in it. And that, that's when it just, it, it happened on, it it dawned on me where, Hey, I think I can write this. And, And it turned out to be something nice. Are there other authors that, that, sort of inspire you that you like to read their writing and in particularly poetry once you you got this interest and now like them a published uh, poet uh, any that that influence you um there i don't know she so she's a an artist a singer who actually came out with her own book um her name is jane aiko uh, she was she's actually one of the this this girl's favorite artists and her book was actually really, really good. I forgot the name of it because it's been a little while since I read it. But she had some really nice, meaningful words in her book as well. Um, so maybe maybe that's where I got inspired from, from her uh, Jane Aiko's poetry. Yeah, it's interesting where you get inspirations and suddenly those inspirations become a book. And in Camillo's case, the book is Feelings on Paper, as I say, the winner of the Plum Award for Literary Excellence. Not bad for the first time author. The book is, is doing so well. Let's talk about that because you've got, when you you write a book and publish a book, those are two different uh, skill sets there. Writing is one thing, publishing and then marketing that type of thing to get the word out there. What's that experience been like for you after you finished writing it, publishing it, and then uh, and then putting it on the marketplace? So it all starts with your friends and family. Um, you you have to slowly branch out, let people know that the book actually exists, and then from there, I actually went through my publishing company, Writers Republic. They're amazing. Um, they actually had a marketing plan for me, and they created social media accounts. They post daily uh, on my behalf, and they even reach out to bookstores and libraries. Um, I think even there's this famous bookstore in, I want to say it's Paris. Uh, it's, it's, it's called Shakespeare, uh, Shakespeare bookstore. 
they they're looking to sell my book physically and i think they might be the very first store to physically sell my book um and they're like a famous i've actually visited there once uh, when i was in the military i, I was stationed in germany and i visited this, this bookstore and I, I think that'd be a, a, the greatest honor that that i can ask for honestly is to have my book physically sold in a store wouldn't that be great to walk in the store and to see your book? In particular, a store like that that you visited at one point, a, a, an internationally renowned bookstore, and to see your book there featured, that has to be, uh, uh, you know, I mean, just to even go to the Internet and see that in the bookstores that your book is available and read the reviews from, from people. In fact, what have the reviews been like? What's it like getting feedback from those that, that, that go to Writers Republic, Amazon, and post theirs, and, and, but family members and friends that read the book as well? What's it like getting that feedback? It, it's always amazing when, when the feedback is positive. I've, I've had a couple of people tell me, hey, maybe you should change this. Maybe uh, this is how something else could be written, which I, I take into account, honestly. I, I love uh, feedback. I love positive and negative because I can, I can work off both of them. But I've gotten a lot, a lot of positive feedback from friends and family and on my, my Amazon reviews and Writers Republic reviews. And it, it's so humbling. Um, getting this positive feedback from people that you don't even know just because they appreciate what you've written. Is that part of being successful creatively that you have an open mind when you do something, other people give you uh, feedback and you accept that feedback because sometimes when people give us feedback, we don't want to hear it. But part of growing as an artist is that being able to, to listen to what they're saying, because you can't discount everything. Somebody might give you some, some little tip that will make you a, a better writer. Most definitely. You have to take everything into account. Even like for me personally, this is the first time I've written anything, the first time I've published. Um, so I would take all the, the feedback in the world if, if people were willing to give it. And I think for people who also have written multiple books or series, I think it's, it's still positive for them to be able to take those negative feedbacks or crit, uh, critical uh, feedbacks from, from other individuals and just take just take it with a grain of salt. Uh, you could learn from it. You could it's, you could be inspired by it. They could help you change. It could help you write something else that you didn't think that you had in mind. So definitely the, the positive and feedback is both equally important. What are you planning in your life? I mentioned a student. Uh, talk about that and where you would like to go with, with all of this, not just the poetry, but where you see life going for, for you. So I actually, uh, I'm a senior right now in college. I graduate Mar the end of March of next year uh, with a, a bachelor's in management studies. I would love to own my own restaurant, um, but I've, I've spent six years in the military. I don't have any restaurant experience. So obviously I would have to maybe manage one or, or work in one. I would even consider being a server just to get that experience of a restaurant prior to me trying to own my own. I would like to learn the ins and outs. Um, but that's, that's the main goal is to eventually own a business or a restaurant. Um, I feel like I, I was put in a leader, a leadership position when I was in the military. And so I think I'll, I'll do good things if, if I were able to manage my own restaurant or, or business. Well, that's interesting because a few years ago, I'm sure you wouldn't have thought yourself to be a published poet, and now you are. Now you're thinking about it. I'd love to own a restaurant. I have no experience, but I'm not going to let that stop me. Is that where, did the military, is that where that brought this out in you? The fact that, okay, I don't have any knowledge now. That's that's a challenge. I'll, I'll get uh, around that roadblock and, and go with that. Was that a positive for you in the military that, uh, that well, I, if I set my mind to it, I can do it? Honestly, uh, since I was a kid, as far as I can remember, I've always loved cooking. I was always fascinated with, with food and, and cooking and, and just making these different recipes. And uh, it's funny because till this day, my, my dad would mention I would be three years old watching Rachel Ray <laughs> minute meals uh, after a, a nap. And he, he, he knows I'm passionate about cooking. And that's one of the reasons why I want to own a restaurant is because I just have a passion for cooking. Mentioned six years in the military. What was that like? You get to visit the bookstore over in France that hopefully will have your book featured there very soon. What was that experience like in, in rounding you out to make you the person that you are today? It, it was so awesome. Um, I had some of the best times of my life, uh, some some not so great, but majority of it was, was just amazing, the experience. I traveled to 
over 50 different countries while I was in the military. Um, I'd start off in Wyoming, which isn't the, the best place, but it's down the street from Colorado, and Colorado is amazing. My second base was uh, South Korea. I had a little bit of knee surgery when I was over there, so I didn't get to travel as much, but I did, I did travel a bit while I was in South Korea, but it wasn't until when I was stationed in Germany for three and a half years uh, for the, the second half of my contract where I was traveling every weekend. Uh, every time that I would have a, a couple days off, I would buy a plane ticket to Switzerland or, or Greece or Rome or Spain. It, it, every weekend I would try and, and make it a, a point to, to travel to a new country. I, I just love traveling. It, it was the best time of my life. What has this experience been like for you in writing the book? Boy, I can sense your passion, the, the joy that you're getting in writing the book and sharing the story with others. Not only writing it, but working with uh, with Writers Republic uh, information, by the way, at writersrepublic.com in the bookshop for the book. But working with Writers Republic, getting the book out there, touching other lives. What what has this been like for you for the last uh, several years? It's it's been great um, because honestly, a lot of my friends and family have reached out asking themselves how how do they go about publishing a book, and they've asked me for advice when I never thought I'd be giving advice on on writing a book, let alone getting it published. So the experience has been, like I said, humbling. And, and it's amazing that people, the, the community of writing in general, and I, I think just the community is just a great one to be a part of because everyone is just reaching out, trying to get help. And all you can do is help someone and, and ensure that they, they succeed. The the girl that uh, the young woman that that really got this whole journey started for you. You mentioned lived down the street. If you happen to run into her, what would you tell her if you had the opportunity to to talk with her now? And how much of this would you open up about the book, or what what would you say to her without giving away too much here? I don't want to tap into raw emotion still, but what what would you say to her? Um, what would I say to her? Uh, I I would first thank her for introducing me to poetry and for inspiring me to write the book, even though she doesn't know about it. Um, <laughs> I would wish her nothing but happiness because obviously that, that's all we have in this world is our own happiness. And I hope that she's doing well. I know she has a son and times are rough right now, but I, I'm really happy the memories that we were able to share together. And I just want to thank her for inspiring me. Well, as you read the book, you can share a lot of the emotions that Camillo went through. And here's a case where a lot of us would go, gee, my world just ended. I really was hoping this relationship would go somewhere. It really opened another world for you, didn't it? I mean, it, it wasn't just one ended and now what do I do? One ended and another door literally opened and you're now a published author. Yeah, it, it, the opportunity the opportunity was was. It's crazy. It, was, it just presented itself. Uh, you turning a tragedy, a tragedy, a tragedy into something that is just. You can look back and say, "Hey, I wrote this book. I was able to publish it." It's that's a goal in itself. So turning a tragedy into something positive is. You can't ask for anything more than that. You've done such a wonderful job. Words taken straight from the soul. The book is called Feelings on Paper by Camillo Romeo Zuniga. Camillo is C-A-M-I-L-O, Romeo Zuniga, Z-U-N-I-G-A, the third. The book's available at uh, all the usual places. I'll send you to writersrepublic.com in the bookshop, and you'll find it featured there. Uh, Camillo's website is authorcamillozuniga.com, and I'll have all that up on our website this week in America.us. A touching book of poetry, so well done, winner of the Plume Award for Literary Excellence. Uh, Camillo, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. We will stay in touch. Would love to have you back when you uh, when you get your ideas down and, and, and the second book is ready to go. Congratulations on the success that you've had. Thank you for being with us on the program. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me, Rick. It's been, it's been an honor, and, and I'm blessed to be here. Thank you so much. Well, it is our pleasure. It's been fun talking with you. Camillo Romeo Zuniga, our guest. The book is Feelings on Paper. Book available at uh, Amazon at uh, writersrepublic.com in the bookshop. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, for more information. Back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. 
Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.